averaging almost 19 points per game. And again, not shy when it comes to putting up the basketball from outside the property line. And it is Liberty controlling here to get things started. Both teams coming in on two game win streaks with Liberty having defeated East Carolina on the 17th, 74-64. And you have Northern Iowa having won at Marshall on the 18th, 75-60. Step back here, McGee. And he's unable to get his first shot attempt to go. The rebound off to Nate Heisey, 6'4 freshman from Lake City, Minnesota. We're gonna see a lot of offense run through McGee for Liberty. And one of the things we learned about him from Coach Richie McKay was his ability to separate. So even if you put a bigger defender on him, he actually prefers that, Kanoa. Got some speed and quickness to get the shot off. Yeah, he's averaging 18.7 points per game, A.J. Green. Very much the go-to guy offensively for you and I. But still scoreless here about a minute in. E. That went off the heel and a good box out there underneath by Titan Anderson. Another freshman on this Panther squad. Ball out of bounds and it will stay in this same direction. Here's Cole Henry, 6'9", redshirt freshman. He's a big guy, but they'll often run the offense through him. He's the team leader in rebounds and assists. The takeaway, though, for Liberty, and we got a foul underneath as Shiloh Robinson gets hit on the way up. Take a look at the Liberty starting lineup, and well, we mentioned McGee. Kyle Rode, though, might be one of the X factors. Head coach Richie McKay says he is maybe as good a leader as he has ever been around. Yeah, you talk about point forwards, and Kyle Rode is that guy. 6'7", 220 pounds, and one of the best leaders that you'll ever have on a team. In fact, we heard him yesterday in practice talking to the coaches saying, hey, we need to run some more defense. I, you know, I've never, I've never heard a player talk about that. <laughs> yeah. That's not usually a request on behalf of the players at practice as you take a look at the Northern <laughs> Iowa starting oh. five. And again, Cole Henry, very similarly to Kyle Rode, oftentimes will initiate the action. This time he kicks out to Heisey. Extra pass and a three ball goes for Taiwan Pickford, 6'4", senior from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He's averaging five and a half points per game. One of those super seniors on the roster. Yeah, you and I move the ball very well. They hit about nine threes a game. And they're going to run the offense through A.J. Green, but as you can see, quick ball movement. Good hands by Pickford there. A miscommunication there for the Flames. Right back to our cut. Oh, yeah, the baseline, and that's Heisey getting fouled. Liberty is led by head coach Richie McKay, actually in his second stint at the top of the program. His ninth season overall, and all he's done is lead this program to regular season and conference tournament championships in the Atlantic Sun the last three years. Done a phenomenal job taking a team from 333rd in the NCAA to five straight 20 win seasons, three straight A Sun championships. On the other side, Ben Jacobson in his 16th season. How about this? He is coaching officially today in his 500th game. Got the great experience, and you and I has come to be a team that no one wants to face. Tournament time, they're that scary team, right? If they're, maybe I should pick them in my bracket just because. Yeah, you should probably take a look at it. 4-1 advantage here for the Panthers. And that pass in traffic somehow gets home to Blake Preston freshly inserted into the game. Fourth year with the Liberty program. He is old school, according to Richie McKay, and he gets it done underneath. I'm not a little old school. I miss old school. <laughs> and there is old school grabbing the defensive rebound. You need players who play that type of game, right? Set screens, get your rebounds. Nothing too flashy, just here to put in the work. A hesitation move by McGee. And McDowell stepped back from the corner. That one goes in and out. You see the spacing for you and I. They're going to play four out, one in. So that will really stretch the defense, Kanoa. It gives you the ability to attack, come off screens, come off the dribble, look inside, quick passes. That's a great offensive set there. And a good look for Henry, but couldn't get it down. 
You talk about the defense for Liberty, of course, it is known as that pack line defense that Richie McKay brought over after his time on the staff under Tony Bennett at Virginia. And that's why a four out one in offense helps to create shots for you because pack line means you're going to drive right into a wall, a pack of wolves. And so that defense is so effective at UVA. Coach McKay brought that into his program here at Liberty. And you know, that's one of the reasons for their success is because the defense, it's sort of this hybrid between man and zone. Again, you drive into a wall of players. And it makes you change your mind about continuing to put the ball forward. Here's Henry, four minutes into this one. And now AJ Green off the handoff. Three ball up by Pickford, and that's his second from downtown. And that's one thing about you and I. They're a disciplined offense, right? So they're not going to take quick shots or shots that are poor in nature. They're going to keep working for that open look. And they definitely did there, and Pickford made a pay. Pickford was just one of 12 from the land of three coming into this game. He's now two of three here this morning. Good kick out by McGee. McDowell unable to hit, though. You know what helps sometimes get you really involved in the game? So Pickford has the assignment of guarding Darius McGee. Knowing you've got the other team's best player, it makes you lock in initially. You have to come with the offense, that energy, excuse me, on defense. Olympic legend and former ambassador of Aloha here in the islands, Duke Kahanamoku. Well, a 10 a.m. start time for this one here locally, Brooke, and Liberty right now, uh, perhaps not quite fully awake, just one of six from the field to start. Well, UNI's defense has been solid to start this game. They, they don't foul. They've got the lowest fouls in the NCAA at only 11 a game. So they're going to play in front of you, keep you contained, and force you to hit good shots. And Liberty, without Darius McGee getting going, they've had to find somebody else to do that. And so far, there's a lid on the rim for the Liberty Flames. Offensive rebound, though, and a putback by Austin Fight, 6'9", 250-pound redshirt junior. He's averaging seven points per game, preseason all. Missouri Valley Conference second team selection. So you can understand at that size, 6'9", 250, why they would want to give him the ball on the block and just let him go to work. Brody Peebles, another miss there for the Flames. So not living up to their nickname just yet here in the early goings of this first game of the day one slate, Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. And right now the Panthers doing a great job on the boards. Not allowing Liberty second chances. That's good defense by Kyle Rhodes. Yeah, and Merrill Carter getting bumped on the shot, and Rhodes going to pick up a foul. Officiating crew for this one, Marquise Pettigrew is the head referee, Bart Lennox and Nate Harris. And going to the free throw line, Noah Carter, 6'6", 230-pound sophomore from Dubuque, Iowa. And he hits the first, a 78% free throw shooter coming in. A lot of upside, according to head coach Ben Jacobson, when it comes to Noah Carter. Yeah, the X factor, one of them anyways, for this team. Coach Jacobson talks about how he has such a unique way of getting baskets. You love to have scorers who can put it on the floor, shoot mid-range, shoot from three-point line. That's that three-level score that they talk about, and, and that's something that Noah Carter brings to the table. So it's a 7-0 run at the moment here for UNI. Can Rode end that run? Yes, he can. Right on cue. A 32% three-point shooter. Richie McKay referred to him as a unicorn. Another three try. This is Carter, and he responds immediately. So Panthers now three of five from distance. Extra pass, it's Rose. Can he go back to back? Yes, he can. The last two possessions, what I've liked about Liberty is how Darius McGee has, instead of forcing himself to take a shot, he's worked that momentum, his speed, into the advantage of getting others on his team shots. And, and Kyle Rose, one of the confident shooters on this team, they're finding him. He's got the hot hand right now. Oh, the hesitation. Wow. And it's going to be a blocking fight. Seemed like he was set before the defender took off. Three. Well, yeah. Isaiah Warfield trying to step in there, bro. Yeah, let's see what Warfield, well, he was having the position before the defender, or before the offense, excuse me, gets up in the air, and it looks like he was still getting into position as the offensive player took off. So that's that's been one of those rules that's... 
I wish it had some subjectivity to it, but I love the block charge. I love the attempts to take in a charge. I mean, that, to me, gives your team energy no matter what. Meanwhile, Carter going back to the free throw line. He's made his first three. And second attempt on that trip rims out. So a 15 to nine advantage here for campus. Tough shot. He has yet to score here for the Flames. You feel that he's forcing it a bit, right? Not utilizing the screen on the top of the key, trying to find something, but then using the screen on the wing to shoot a fadeaway three. That's a hard shot. If you haven't gotten yourself into the game yet, maybe try putting it on the floor and getting a close one in. Oh, how about the move by Austin Fife? Good luck trying to block that half. <laughs> I don't know if that's happening. Fifth year with this Northern Iowa program. He's a veteran savvy on that series of moves in the post area. And that pass goes astray, intended for Shiloh Robinson. Robinson trying to slip the screen, and he did. We just didn't get his hands up, ready for the ball. Carter. Oh, he went up with intention. Gets the M1. And right now, Noah Carter running things. The energy I got from Carter that he's about to rip this rim down. Hard dribbles. Come on, just one to get to the rim. That's what you love to see. Ball fake, one dribble, get to the rim. The one back to the line for the M1. Brody Peebles picking up the foul. Noah Carter with eight early points. Get to the free throw line for what will be his fifth attempt already here in the first eight minutes. And gets the friendly roll. Well, interesting. You have Darius McGee averaging 19 and a half points a game. You have AJ Green on the Northern Iowa side averaging almost 19 a game. And both of those players so far scoreless. Panthers have nailed their shots inside the three, and that's that's been one reason that their momentum has been a lot better in this game so far. Liberty. Moving the ball well, but at times forcing shots. Robinson, good spin move, gets to the 10. And that ends a 6-0 Panthers run. Great job by Carter. Shoots, Robinson, excuse me, shoots 56% from the floor. You want to make it easy on yourself. You're struggling from the floor, try it. Carter is grooving right now. Yeah, he is. Five straight made field goals for Northern Iowa, and Carter has 11 points to lead everybody. Nakaya Abi, number 24 for Liberty, trying to pass it underneath to Van Zandt, but that opened up the look from Shiloh Robinson, who drills it. Robertson, his fourth made three of this young season. Runner by Bowen Bourne off the mark. And a chance here for Liberty to cut further into this deficit. Three ball. McDowell got it. Liberty likes that corner three shot. They utilize Darius McGee using that top of the, of the key screen. And that allows him to either put the ball on the floor or make that pass into the corner for that quick three. And it's, it's worked well for Liberty to get the shots. They just haven't knocked it down just yet. Turn around by A.J. Green is short. And so now it's Liberty on a 6-0 run. McGee with the left gets in the book. That's where you see his blazing speed and quickness. He's got such tight handles that, again, when he utilizes that screen well and gets into traffic, he can really weave, create separation like he told you about. And he finishes nicely with the left hand. And the reigning Atlantic Sun Player of the Year was also the conference tournament MVP a season ago. Here's Noah Carter. And that time draws nothing, bounces out of bounds. And Darius McGee and company have awakened here in Honolulu. Yeah, Darius McGee, you time to wake their bodies up. Get ready to go. Get a good sweat on in this game. It, and it was the first day of tournament games. You just feel a little tight, right? You want to have a good showing. You want to make sure you spend all, spend all this time to get out here. So you want to win games. Okay! My word. Woo! Makaya Abi saying aloha 
to the fans here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. It's a 10-0 run now for Liberty, and that shot was off the mark from Cole Henry. Bringing some muscle in this game with Abi. Listed at 6'2", 220, but that, that feels undersized. I want to make sure I got that right. I think it's 6'7". I think I gave him a few less inches. Abi, who came out with gangbusters last season, then saw his minutes dwindle a little bit as the year wore on, but boy, did he make a splash. Good splash connection there between Vincent and Shiloh Robinson, who dunks it in. And it is now a 12-0 Flames run. Liberty's figured out how to score inside. They weren't doing that at first. They were going after the three, trying to get back on. But now that they've scored inside, UNA has got to answer. Isaac unable to do so. Going way up for the offensive board was Pickford. He was up in the atmosphere. Big time board for Pickford. He's got some pops. He's got eight points. Your thoughts on the pace here at this juncture of the game? It's felt methodical. You know, I don't think we've seen a lot of fast break opportunities just yet. You got guys that want to work for the best shot, which makes sense, right? You've got a Liberty team with a bit of a, a UVA background with Coach McKay coming from there. So they're going to work for a good shot. And the same thing, you, know, you and I as a disciplined team. The thought is to go inside out, run it through A.J. Green, try to go inside if they can. Oh, and Paul Henry was looking for yeah. Green, but he zigged when he thought he would zag. It goes out of bounds. And that brings us... <laughs> No thanks. Yeah, that should be a pretty fun matchup. If you like that old school type of oh. physical football too. Well, 12-2 Liberty run. They trailed by 11 at one point in this opening frame. Closing in on seven and a half minutes left to play in the first half. This is game one of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Four games on the docket for you. And bodies hitting the floor here. Three seconds on the shot clock. A B has to get it up. Instead, he gives it up. Shiloh Robinson unable to hit from straight away. Again, good defense by the Panthers. They don't foul. They just contain. Their bigs coming hard off those screens to really make McGee work to come around that screen. They, they high head, which means they step in front of the screen and make you dribble a wide arc around it. Double team there. And Fife. In some trouble, goes cross court off the fingertips of Robinson, finds Green, and then after a couple of pump fakes, it's put up and in by Titan Anderson. That was great defense by Liberty in the right place, that corner, especially in front of the bench. So the bench can be loud, it kind of adds more anxiety to Fife, but he did a good job of looking cross court. That's the pass that's going to be open. So interesting to hear these two head coaches talk. Very parallel in the way they emphasize the defensive end of the floor. And they say, hey, if you want to play, you want to get on the floor, you better get on the defensive end and make some noise. Making some noise from distance, though, is Makaya Abi. We saw the dunk, and now we see the three. He's doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, he's been a guy that's, that's showing more consistency after a year in his freshman season that was inconsistent. He has defense, that was an issue, but he showed a really want and earn some more playing time so far today. Yeah, started well, though, as mentioned. 19 points in his freshman debut against Purdue as A.J. Green is able to stick it for his first points of the game. But getting back to a B, had 29 points in his first two games as a freshman, the most by a Liberty freshman since Seth Curry, you may remember, actually did start at Liberty. That was back in 2008. Right. I mean, you can have that blind success as a freshman because you just don't know any better, right? You went playing hard, and that's a tough shot by McGee off balance. Then all of a sudden, the defense takes notice of you. Oh, we do have to pay attention to you. It steps up, and then you got to learn new ways to score. you got to hit that next level. That's right. Moving up the scout, as yes, they say, right? that's right. I had a pretty good freshman season. Sophomore was a little more difficult, and, and then junior year, I don't know what happened, but I couldn't hit a shot to save my life. So I ended up focusing on defense that year instead, but that really helped. And you build that confidence and that hard work. And then all of a sudden you got a whole new skill set to bring in. And it's it's actually really fun to prevent other people from scoring. It almost feels as good as scoring yourself. You're like, you know what, if I'm miserable, you're going to be miserable too. Shiloh Robinson picking up that last foul, by the way, his second. We are knotted at 28. Under 10 on the shot clock here for UNI. Green. Oh, had to 
hanging in the air. Good challenge. It almost went, though. Trickles off the rim, but the good contest by Vincent. Strong shot from A.J. Green, and, and that's one of the things Coach Jacobson told us about was that his strength has been exceptional since his sophomore year. He's really put the work in the weight room. Moves much better. If you don't hit a shot like that or attempt a shot like that without getting in the weight room. McGee, quick trigger three. Hey. Splash. That's a three, right? Gives you a little idea of how much McGee, how dangerous, I should say, he is from the three-point line. Came in leading the nation in attempted three-pointers, but sixth and made threes. Gets another one there. All kinds of bodies on the deck. And an air ball three from the right corner by Pickford, but Darius McGee getting the volume turned up a little bit here in the arena. Has hit 41 coming into this tournament, and that was no hesitation. He said, oh, are you going to give me an inch? I'm going to let you know. Give me three of those. Already the career Liberty University three-point leader. He's got seven points. Pickford put it in on the floor. And that one wiped away by Blake Preston. Here's Peebles along the baseline. Wave off the bucket. It's going to be a foul against UNI. Great job by Preston. Help side. Reading it. McGee goes for the fake, but Preston does not. That's where old school comes into play. Not going to fake out Blake Preston. Good size. 6'9", 225 pounds. He's had seven starts this season. Started 21 of 29 games last year. So he can give you that experience that you need. Ten seconds to shoot. Here's Road. Van Sant sets the feet. That went a little long. Carter stopping and popping. So three and a half minutes left here in half number one. A pretty competitive one, even though it was Northern Iowa jumping out to the early 11-point lead. Uncharacteristic quick shot for Northern Iowa. You know, they haven't scored in the last two and a half minutes, so... Even though Carter's been hot for this game, I don't know that's the shot necessarily that Coach Jacobson wanted to see. Strong drive by Rhodes. The finish not there, though, and here's A.J. Green. Just two points, just three attempts as well for A.J. Green. That time, though, draws the defensive foul. And we got a three-point contest here with 3-0-3. Kind of brings a whole different allure, right, to the, to the program, so... We want to see what they're working with. Also, BYU haven't gotten a real good look at them yet this year, so it'll be nice to see them in person. So that foul prior to the break, the seventh team foul against Liberty, sending A.J. Green to the free throw line for the bonus. Yeah, getting back to Scotty Pippen Jr. out of Sierra Canyon. Mm -hmm. And Sierra Canyon actually in town with Ronnie James and company uh, playing in a local a prep tournament, the Iolani Classic, held at my alma mater, Iolani School. So some interesting synergy taking place there. Also, we have some star power in the house. That's what you're saying. The drive by a beat. The lane just cleared for the big truck. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd get out of the way, too. I'm sure number 50, Austin, by 250 pounds. Probably gonna give him some space to work with. And a good play along the baseline to send the possession Liberty's way. That was Isaiah Warfield getting it done. Good hands and defense. First by Peebles and then Warfield to keep the ball in play and get the ball back to Liberty. It's, it's those 50-50 balls, right? The hustle plays that will end up benefiting you in the end. Good job by Abi not to force that after the tough catch. You get rewarded with a three. The third made triple for Kyle Rode here in this first half. And the lead is now seven for Liberty. And another miss there for Northern Iowa. They have missed their last five. Meanwhile, Liberty enjoying its largest lead of the first frame. So after the mishandle, Abi gets a grip on the ball, and instead of you know, perhaps panicking, making a tough decision, he might have done that as a freshman, right? But that's where you see growth moments. Instead, 
He feels the defense on him. He looks outside. Where's the better shot? Finds Road. Gets the three. Well, McGee trying to find a B cut into the hoop, but it's deflected out of bounds. Good defense there by Fife. Yeah, it just looks like Liberty has settled in. They seem to be much more comfortable in some of their offensive action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they've really held the Panthers to no shots, no field goals the last almost four and a half minutes. So the defense from the Flames really stepped up. And you see that number in the lower third. 25-7 run over the last 10 minutes here for Liberty, turning this thing around, and he adds to it. Get low. Give me a step back. Give me a follow-through. The arc on that three. That's McGee. That's 5'9". 150 working for you. Three flick. Dropping a couple of threes. And Liberty has completely flipped the script here in the first half. At one point trailed by 11. They're now up double figures. McGee has a quiet nature about him. He's a humble guy from what we hear from Coach McKay. But he's speaking real loudly right now with his game. And it is smooth, right? I like it. That feathery flick. That's a great way to describe it. Nice flick there by Nate Heisey, the freshman from Lake City, Minnesota. Able to drop the mid-ranger. He's averaging nine and a half points per game. Was a Missouri Valley Conference all-freshman selection last year. And a timeout taken by the Midwest. And I mean, it doesn't take but, you know, just two minutes for your entire life to change. So our heart goes out to the entire community. Meanwhile, out of the timeout, under a minute to play here in the first half. McGee, long three, that one rims out. If he had made that. <laughs> He's feeling it. That little heat check for you right there. They're trying to get a two for one. Maybe trying to get maybe two threes before the half's over. They'll try and settle for another one. Yeah, about a 10 second difference between the clocks. And that one goes through the legs of Fife. Don't play for one now. Okay, holding up the finger, saying let's just get one good quality shot before we head into the break, guys. Down to five seconds. Bounce pass to McGee. He wasn't cutting, certainly not at the speed that a B was thinking he would. And so it goes out of bounds 1.8 here for Northern Iowa to try something. Yeah, you see McGee kind of saying, hey, let's settle down, guys. And that was just too much pace on that shot. And that's where a B made too quick of a decision there, right? Trying to get the ball into the hands of McGee to end the half. But that possession felt forced for Liberty. Good defense, though, by you and I. Inbound goes to Green. Will he hoist? He will, but that's how the first 20 minutes come to a close. Liberty trailing by as many as 11 early on. They close the first half on a 20. Ball on the floor. You want to put them in panic mode, Kanoa. You want to force them into quick, tough shots. And so far, the Panthers doing a good job on the board. They're plus three right now for rebound. They can force Liberty into tough, off-balance shots, then grab the boards themselves. They've been doing a good job at moving the ball on offense, scoring, getting it inside, but we haven't heard a whole lot of A.J. Green today. Just one of four so far for three points. Seven seconds to shoot. Here is A.J. Green. Tough step-back jumper on the baseline. That was pretty. Didn't expect him to get that kind of separation, but again, that's where when you put work in the weight room, you can do things like that. Your legs all the way up to the follow-through. That's going to make a difference. Yeah, Green coming off of a 29-point performance against Marshall. 75-60 win for UNI back on the 18th. That actually put him in the top 10 in career points within the Panthers program as that shot from the corner by McDowell's off the mark. You had mentioned in the first half you thought Liberty as Green rises up and draws nothing. McGee with the rebound. You thought Liberty was maybe forcing the three-point shot a little bit too much early on. They started going to the basket and then that opened up the three-point shot and they started hitting it. When McGee started utilizing the high ball screen, deciding which way to go, that's where it forced you and I kind of on their heels defensively. He's so quick, so if he doesn't use it, he goes left, he's got this wing or the corner three to kick it out, or he can finish at the rim. So that's, to me, what changed the game, because he found a couple of open shots. Kyle Rode knocked three for three threes down 
And that, that's really what got it going for Liberty, was Rode hitting threes, McGee putting the ball on the floor, not being the one to have that weight on his shoulders to score. Again, under 10 to shoot. Very deliberate possessions here early on. Rode came in to swipe it away, but he'll be called for the reach-in foul. A little overly aggressive that time. That's his second foul. First ever meeting between these two programs. For Liberty, their first appearance in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. UNI's been here before. Placed sixth in 2015, went one and two that year. And that was an awkward possession for the Panthers. They give it right back to Liberty. Yeah, you could feel like they didn't have anything going. Jacobson going to make a couple of substitutions here. His big guys who got it done for them in the first half. Noah Carter and Austin Fife checking in. So to the bench goes Henry and Titan Anderson. I mentioned Noah Carter had those 11 first half points for Northern Iowa. He remains their top scorer. Under 10 now on the clock for Liberty. These two teams not in any hurry here to start the second half. Robinson, after a couple of pump fakes, blocked by Carter. Put back. May have been blocked by the backboard. Either way, it's cleared by Carter. Carter, a difference maker. The second he gets involved in the game, he got felt like Robinson. After the post dribbles two times, if you're going three and four dribbles, you got nothing. It's it's probably a lost shot after that. Good defense by Rose. Yeah, the takeaway there. Flames coming back the other way on the floor. Here's McGee. Hard drive. That one gets batted out of bounds by Nate Heisey. And it'll be last touched by McGee, and so it's UNI basketball. There's Carter defensively just walling up, staying with it, bodied up, good strength. And that's where you and I are not fouling. It's the lowest fouling team in the NCAA. And two good defensive possessions by the Panthers. Their substitutions making a big difference. Okay, big body fight. Fight going to the left. Rims out, rebound off to Preston. So we're buffering here a little bit in the first three plus minutes of half number two. Poke away, take away, Heisey, all the way. Heisey coming for the premier defenders on this seat on this team last season he was just a defender but now he's learned how to score more his first career double double this season against jackson state and another that time unforced turnover for liberty panther defense stepping up good hands by heisey understanding that once mcgee gets into traffic he's going to give it up not four shots the help side with the deflection leads to the fast break bucket. And That's that a pass deflected and taken away. It's been sent. Buckle up. Eyeballs on the rim there for Van Zandt. And both teams did pretty good protecting the basketball in the first 20 minutes, but they've been giving it away. Tis the season of giving for sure, but <laughs> certainly not what the coaches had in mind here to start this second half, and resulting in points at either end. Green, the late kick to Heisey, three up, three down. Heisey has eight. We had a great line into watching that three. The rotation was perfect. I don't think you get a better looking shot than that. Coming off the fingertips of Heisey. Road looking to give it up. Good five, McGee was left alone in the lane. Something McGee does really well, we haven't talked about yet, is how well he moves without the basketball. When you've got a guy who's been playing and is in great shape, you know, I think about um, the, the Richard Jeffersons of the world and, and those guys who just had endless amounts of energy. And it's so hard to stick with. Reaching foul on Van Zandt. 
Uh, you see the defense leading to offense here for the respective league the last three years. They have been, as it pertains to the Atlantic Sun, dominant. I liked what he had to say, too, when we asked him, you know, how do you take a team from ranked 333rd to having 520 win seasons in a row? And he said that it's a commitment to having a shared experience and the culture of playing hard, competing, playing smart, being disciplined, playing together, a, a, a lead over me mentality and having a purpose where you all could trust each other. And, and that really describes this team really well. When you have that type of foundation, Kanoa, you're going to get wins. And also a commitment to the pack line defense and understanding how that works also gives teams some nightmares. Kanoa Carter going to the line after the foul called on Blake Preston. Yeah, Coach McKay saying when it comes to the pack line defense, it takes some of the younger kids a while to get used to it. Some of it is counterintuitive, perhaps, based on what they've learned previously. He says it's a prerequisite, though. You want to see the floor. Well, I'm just going to assume the stat of at least 70% of high school kids, if not more, when they go to college, really don't know or have played defense yet. Right? You, just, you don't understand it. Defense is something that can be taught, and I mean, I was one of them too. I never played defense in high school. But once you get to college, if you are not committed to defending and rebounding, you're not going to see time, period. And that's a defensive foul called against Anderson on the drive by Morphe. Well, I know how difficult this is. There's a bit of a tangent here for you personally, Brooke, having at starred at Coastal Carolina. You had some bitter battles with Liberty. As that shot from straight on by McDowell goes and Liberty back up a half dozen. Yes, yes. The, the Liberty women's team was a bit of a dynasty in the late 90s, starting then into the well into the 2000s. We unfortunately lost to them twice in the Big South Conference Championship to get to the NCAA tournament. So it's, it's still kind of the bane of my existence. <laughs> I think about my college career, but it's, it's been fun to be on this side of things. And Liberty. Hit the three, doing it on defense, setting up well. Shiloh Robinson taking the charge. They say he's the best defender on the team. He can guard positions one through five. And I loved his footwork there, getting his body ready, set up for the charge. Yeah, pretty easy call there for the officials. Back to work. Here's Robinson now with the offensive end. How about that sequence? When the ball has juice, when it moves like that, it gives you all the reasons to take those good three-point shots. Liberty hitting from behind the line today. Shooting over 50% from distance. Now 10 of 19 and a solid drive in response for the freshman Bowen Bourne. Did not play the first two games of the season. Missed five weeks of practice. And so a bit of a late addition to the rotation here for Northern Iowa. It's taken him some time to get acclimated, but he's adjusted well. Yeah, his shooting hand was injured, so that gives you an issue. Then he got need in the quad, so that'll be another charge for Liberty. Warfield taking this one. These are all big-time energy plays. Drive, kick, looking back door. Four players touching the ball in that possession, and then defensively, Warfield doing a great job moving his feet. AJ Green lowering his shoulder to get the charge call. First foul on Green. But Green averaging almost 19 a game, still with just five here. And Liberty's done a pretty good job of limiting his success. McDowell rattles it home. Talk so much about McGee, Keegan McDowell, all he's doing is shooting 45% from downtown coming into this game. Top 20 in the country. So yeah, you're right. We haven't talked a lot about him. It's been a lot of McGee, but he's somebody you got to keep your eyes on. Shot long from three by Carter. The lead is 10, bit of a danger zone, you would say, for Northern Iowa here. Well, it feels like Liberty's up by more than 10, the way they've been dominating this second half. So give credit to the Panthers for sticking around this game. They're a tough team. They're not going to go away quietly. Drive by Warfield. A lot of contact, and the whistle comes. They're going to get Austin fight for this one, and that's going to send Warfield to the free throw line. 
you're the Panthers, knowing you have to run out and defend against the three because they're shooting it well, you're going to be a little less hesitant to close out and, and wait for the drive. So that's good recognition by Warfield. Instead of shooting a three, give him a little head fake, put the ball on the floor. So with that free throw miss, Warfield has not been at the charity strike very often here. He's 0 for 3 this season, but this is, a, this is a guy who was a top 100 recruit, making him thus the highest rated recruit in program history. A lot of potential. This, good size and speed, what we're seeing already, and that's going to be obviously an area of improvement for him. If you're going to be a driver, you got to be able to knock down your free throws. Liberty barely getting to the line in this game anyways, but that's a product of the Panthers' defense. Again, they don't foul. They're the lowest fouling team in the NCAA. Good double team by Liberty again. Fife getting out of it. Pump fake green steps back behind the three-point line. Can't find the range right now. Fife working hard for the board. Three ball is good by Heisey. He's been a bright spot. They need a bright spot right now. They need their bench. They need their fan base. They need that energy the Panthers do to get back in this game because Liberty's brought it. They continue to knock down the three. It's got to come from everywhere. Makaya Abi, a guy who played in Honolulu. So under 11 and a half minutes to play here in this second frame. It's time for the Panthers to get things going. Yeah, A.J. Green needs to really step up to be that guy. He's only two of seven. Carter came through in the first half. He's got 13 points. High with 11 on four or five shooting. But there needs to be somebody else. It can't be these two. Five seconds to shoot. This has been a theme. Heisey now late in the clock to the rack. He's got 13. heisey has got deceptive speed, doesn't he? He turns that corner so quick. Leading the team in steals, but man, give him the ball right now. He's been getting it done. Yeah, Hoops runs in the family. Both his parents played college basketball at the University of Wisconsin River Falls. Here's McGee. Tough drive and the whistle late in the action. And that's going to bring us to another timeout. So it's Liberty up by an undeniable standout team. This seems to be a tournament where the title is seemingly up for grabs. Yeah, and so far, Liberty is looking like they could really compete for that championship. The way they're playing, how confident they're shooting. Really got a good team effort today by the Flames. A lot of whistles at this end of the floor, though, as that one will go against Heisey. And it's his first personal. Team foul number six, though, for Northern Iowa. So Liberty on the verge of getting into the bonus. Still got over ten minutes left in the game. McGee, catch and shoot. And that one, from our angle, looked like it had a chance. A little long there, though, but... Again, we have seen this theme really at both ends. These offenses just wanting to work the shot clock down the home stretch. What I enjoy watching about the way McGee shoots the ball is he takes such little time from the catch to the shoot off the pass. It is all one motion. And that gives him an advantage for his size. At 5'9", 150 pounds, you got to do whatever you can, right? to create separation and have that quick release, and he understands that. Abi, I believe that's his first miss of the game. He was previously four for four. Now you and I coming up the other way. Mm -hmm. Now, it should be pointed out, Trey Burhau, 6'5", super senior, who has started every game prior to this morning, for you and I has not seen the floor here in this game. We were not given any indication that he was not going to play. And he's somebody who's a thousand point scorer, hits a couple of threes for you a game. Had 23 against the win over 16th ranked Arkansas. Hit seven threes actually in that game. Oh, so yeah, you wonder what it is, what the reason is why Burhau is not in the game, but he could certainly give them some help. Bucket there by Henry. 
down to a six-point differential. Shot off the mark by McGee. Follow-up Robinson. The X-Factor strikes again. Say has a quick shot by McGee. Good job by Liberty to get the offensive board. With the lead, there's no, no need for Liberty to rush through these threes. I know they were hot for a while, but now it's time to settle in. The, the culture of a game can change so much per possession. And for as hot as Liberty has been this entire game with threes, they might want to work the clock a bit now. And try to get a good shot inside. Go back in the paint. Three ball off the mark by Road, and Liberty has cooled a little bit from downtown. The pull-up shot for three there is off the mark by Bourne. So eight minutes to play here. And Liberty intent on just keeping the pace nice and easy and relaxed here. I thought that shot was too quick by Bourne. You and I has got to value every possession. And I, that, that wasn't a wide enough open three for me, but <laughs> there's no such thing as that for Liberty. Keegan McDowell. McDowell putting Liberty up 60 to 49. He is four for eight from the field. All of his attempts have... That game, our high school recruiting expert, Paul Biancardi, has given us a great preview of Ingram. Coming out as the number two player in Texas. The X Factor for this team, and as a freshman, doing some big things for the Cardinal. Green rising up, and that jumper was nice. 722 and counting down here. Northern Iowa within nine. We have been informed from various sources. Trey Burhau did not make the trip with Northern Iowa. It is being referred to as a non-COVID related illness. And so as mentioned, a big absence for the Panthers who get the takeaway and then the give to Carter. Nice play there by Horn. And then zooming up the floor, it was Noah Carter with the finish. Catching Darius McGee, looking over to the bench perhaps to get some guidance from coach and the quick hands of Horn. Good energy play, so the last couple possessions for the Panthers have been different, right? Out of that timeout, it felt like this team was different, making better decisions on shots offensively. And then here you see McGee being soft and not paying attention for the ball, and then Carter with the easy, the easy lay-in. So McGee's got to kind of focus in and get layers of it up here because Liberty only a seven-point lead, even though it feels like Liberty's dominated this game. The Panthers are right there. So some time being taken to sort out the clock to see exactly where it should be. They put the shot clock to 13. And Liberty will inbound off of the tie up. Here is McGee, and he hits the three. Catch and shoot. That was nice. That's a very hard shot to hit. Off the catch, a fadeaway three from the corner. Wow. That'll make up for a turnover real quick. The response not there from Green. Yeah, Darius McGee listed at 5'9. We'll put him in that 5'8, 5'9 range, but the guy has a 48 inch vertical, and so the quick release combined with the ability to get up off the floor on his shot, it's not as though he can't get this thing off, as evidence right there, shot off the mark that time, though. Yeah, it certainly helps when you've got a big vert. Again, that is another thing that you can put in your arsenal to create separation. Carter drills the three. He now has 18 points to lead Northern Iowa. The bench starting to come alive a bit for the Panthers. They've been quiet compared to the Flames bench. Two totally different levels of energy. McDowell pulls up from inside the arc, and that is his first attempt that was not a three-pointer. We're going to have a flopping warning given to Northern Iowa. Well, Coach Jacobson was looking for the charge, and, and honestly, I don't blame him because I feel like there was a call similar to Liberty, and Jacobson just got teed up.
And he's arguing about that non-call on the charge right there. I mean, you could see him saying, hey, he took it right in between the numbers. Definitely some contact, but I think not enough to knock him down. So I think the official quick to the call. And after getting a second look at it, I'm going to take back my criticism of the officials. <laughs> it's a good call. Flop was right. So McGee hits the two free throws. It is 67 56, 523 left to play. So it's turning into a now or never type of stretch here for Northern Iowa. And Jacobson, he has been there, done that. He has seen just about everything. 16th season, the winningest head coach in UNI history. And right now, his team struggling to find a way offensively. Carter's been a bright spot, but off the mark there. And this is where Liberty can, can trust their pack line defense, and where it's really going to force UNI into a tough spot. Because as the game goes on and it gets tighter, it, it hurts to try and find more and better uh, clear and, and consistent shots for you and I. When you're going up against that pack line defense, it wears you down. So as the game goes on, it's not like it's just going to open up. Step back by McGee, a little long there, and ball finally corralled by Bowen Bourne. So the Panthers are going to have to create some offense off their defense. And get the pace going a bit more. Rose raises his hand knowing he, was a, he fouled him on that play. But I think if you try to play in the quarter court, half court offense right now after Northern Iowa, game over. They have got to pick up the pace a bit and force Liberty into some transition defense. Well, the annual NBA on Christmas Day tradition continues with five of the best gifts anyone could ask for. The star-studded schedule starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on ESPN with the Hawks and Knicks. Then over on ABC, it's Celtics, Bucks, and Warriors, Suns. Nets, Lakers is on ABC and ESPN with the day capped off by Mavs Jazz at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. That is a Christmas Day NBA lineup right there. Yeah, I'll take all that morning tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like his former self upon his return. I mean, that's scary. I think whether you're a Warriors fan or not, you, you got to cheer for Clay Thompson. And what he's been through, the ACL, the Achilles tears, he's a likable guy. You just hope to see him return. There you go. That worked. Born going up top to Nate Heisey. Great pressure at midcourt by Austin Fife to initiate that sequence in Northern Iowa with a little over four minutes remaining. Not ready to pack it in. McGee, quick trigger. Wow. He got an answer. He's got an answer for that. So smooth. You mentioned how humble he is. You haven't seen his expression change at all during this game. Doesn't get up, doesn't get down, but he's got that 20 points. Yeah, 20 points right at his season average. Blocking foul called against Liberty. Darius McGee referred to by head confidence. I love his demeanor. I was a much more energetic player, but at times it didn't exactly serve me. So McGee, <laughs> at times when the when the game's gotten tight, he's taken over. Never seen his confidence wave. Good feed. Up top green going down to Austin Fife. And he gets the bruise in the bucket. And a chance to cut into this deficit. Yeah, Fife, you know, I'm surprised they haven't gone in to fight more in this game. That's just his fifth shot attempt at the game. He's got that body and that size. If, if he's that deep in the block, Kanoa, it makes no sense to me why they wouldn't try to find him. Slow this game down now, right? Get it to the line. Try to go for the M ones. There's still plenty of time for the Panthers to come back. And now they're adding a little pressure. Yeah, gets the friendly bounce on the free throw. So eight-point differential. By the way, Kyle Rode was called for his fourth foul prior to that last timeout. So he is still out there right here with the basketball, playing with four fouls. Under 10 to shoot. Robinson, hard drive. And he was able to twirl it off of the glass and in. Did not have the angle, it appeared. He got it to go anyway. He's hit some difficult shots today. Really impressed by his level of athleticism and defensively, he's done a good job. But that's a better shot by Green and a good decision. They're getting into the paint, Kanoa. That's where the Panthers have made a difference here in the last couple possessions. Instead of settling for mid range or threes, now's the time to drive and try to again slow this game down, get to the line. 
Darius McGee with it. 20 points. It's his seventh 20-point performance this season. Well, that pass by Road was to nobody. And as Robinson had cut, so a freebie here on the takeaway for Northern Iowa. Can they convert the kick to Heisey for three? Rims out. Offensive board. Fife with the follow. And it's down to a half dozen. You'd expect to see McGee take the shot in this possession. You know, they said, hey, if the shot clock is down to 10 or less, it's going to be McGee. But with Liberty, they, they have the advantage of Road, who scored a bunch of buckets today. Robinson, who's done a great job. Keegan McDowell's also been a reliable scorer for them. But here's McGee off the bounce. Oh, oh, are you serious? <laughs> They've had 15 guys sign pro contracts. And head coach Richie McKay in his ninth season, assistant to Tony Bennett, says Dick Bennett was his mentor. They know how to develop players to get to the next level. Yeah, they're firing right now. Oh, good muscle move there by Carter. Looked oh. like he had lost the handle. He was able to maintain his composure and get the finish. So yeah. still a six-point differential. And I think if you're the Panthers, you got to step up. you got to try to create turnovers right now. I don't think you have time to play half-court defense. Drive by McDowell. Back up top. Here's McGee. Under 10 to shoot. Showtime right now. Looking to go to work. That one rims out. Fight for the rebound, and it is won by Bourne. The double on Green. Good ball movement, open look for Heisey. And a whistle is called, it's gonna stay here, it's gonna go against Liberty. Looks like a B may pick this one up. Wow, two really good opportunities for you and I from the corner, wide open threes, exactly what you want. And that's gotta be disappointing, you know, you're trying to take those shots, get your team back in the game. That's where that pressure comes in, you feel it all at the moment. But yep. Great job by Fife, too. I think he's been the guy that has kept them somewhat alive here, especially late in the second half. Yeah, that foul on a B, his first, but seventh team foul. So a one-on-one -on -one bonus opportunity here for Northern Iowa. Fife first free throw is good. Fife three for four from the line here this morning. Second free throw rattles home. He is a 72% free throw shooter coming in on the season. Four point difference. One minute left to play. Interesting. Sorry, can nowhere to see McGee playing off the ball. Robinson lost the handle, lost it out of bounds. It belongs to the Panthers. That's a big turn over there. I'm surprised that Liberty didn't get the ball in the hands of McGee and allow him to create, especially off the high ball screen. Instead, Road had it. Here's where Robinson, in my opinion, a couple possessions has held onto the ball a little too long. You're going to run into the wall. You're not going to push back Austin Fife. You cannot outbody him. So keep the ball moving and get a better shot. All right, so 42.4 to play. You fine. and I with it. What's fine the call? Fight. Fine fight. But Liberty put Blake Preston in, who's been shown to be a very good defender. And he's somebody that can somewhat match fight for strength. Green on the drive. The turnaround shot. It's contested. Trickles off the rim. Rebound Preston on the box out. And a foul will send Blake Preston to shoot the bonus at the other end. Great substitution by Richie McKay to put number 32 Blake Preston in to try and handle the size and strength of Austin Fife. Preston at 6'9", 225 pounds, bodied up, and that might be the box out of the game. That's the big-time rebound for the Flames. So you and I, once again, playing without usual starter Trey Burhau averaging... Eight points, about five rebounds per game, having to compensate for that absence. But A.J. Green, their top scorer, just nine points on four of 11 shooting, 0 for 4 from downtown. And now Preston trying to add to the lead, misses the front end. you got to go quick. You have literally no time right now. If you're A.J. Green, and that's 
That's a big foul right there. Preston, about 30 feet in front of the yeah. rim. I mean, you want to hedge, but you also want to be cognizant of, of not making contact right now. Stay in front without fouling. And that sends A.J. Green, an 85% free throw shooter to the line. He's one of two so far in this game. So one and one opportunity here. And coolly, A.J. Green knocks down the first, the 6'4", 190-pound junior from Cedar Falls, Iowa. It's crazy to think had the Panthers hit one of those corner threes, they'd either be tied or have the lead. So as many shots as they've missed today, especially from behind the line, they're just 6 of 21. They've gotten themselves in this game within one possession right now. Green knocks down the second. A.J. Green, who played just three games last year and saw his season end because of a hip injury, which required two surgeries, but back in the 2019-2020 season, he was the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year, and he cuts the lead down to two. Full court pressure from the Panthers. Got to try to get a turnover or foul. Almost McGee a mishandle. Yep. Obby's a 90% free throw shooter. He's not the guy you want to foul. Yeah, Abi, 9 of 10 from the line on the season. This will be his first attempt coming up. So how about some of the grit from Northern Iowa, though? A 6-0 run here to put them within two. And they have proven that they will not give up easily. Yeah, this is a fundamentally sound team, as is Liberty. And Abi's been big in this game. Two big shots for him right now. And he hits the first. This guy's been impressive. The 6'7", 220-pound sophomore. So if you're Liberty, you want to defend against the three. You want to switch everything, all screens. Misses the second. Stay in front. You got to think that A.J. Green's going to be the guy to take this three. To tie it. He gets fouled. In the act. Wow. You heard the collective sigh from the crowd. And that's Shiloh Robinson with the contact. So a B misses the second of the one and one bonus free throw opportunities at the other end. And here's AJ Green looking to tie it, and then Shiloh Robinson commits the foul. Three shots here for Green, and he misses the first. Oh my gosh. Yeah, nail, it's a nail biter first thing in the morning. Who needs coffee? That's right. Right? This is the wake up call right here. All right. <laughs> so, what does he do here, Brooke? For me, I'm missing the shot. I, I'm trusting my big guys. I'm, I'm, I'm confused by Fife's out of this game. For me, if I'm Coach Jacobson, I'm looking to miss the shot, have Fife go in, try to get me that offensive rebound and put back. That's a lot of time. You, you got to inbound the ball, foul. I don't know. To me, that eats up too much clock. He makes the second. The next foul will also be two automatic free throws right. as opposed to the one and one. Good call. Got to go for the steal of the quick foul. Quickly get it into McDowell. And he is one of their best free throw shooters. In fact, their best, 91.7 percentage wise on the season. Yeah. If it were me, I'd have a different strategy for that last shot. I, I would have kept Fife in the game and, and tried to get him in a good position. You know, but missing free throws is actually really hard. People people think it's easy to just miss automatically, but it's not how you train your body. You don't train it to miss. And Keegan McDowell, 92%. He's the right guy to have on the line if you're at Liberty. Makes it look pretty easy. And calm from the free throw line there, 76-74. So you and I will at least have a chance to tie, depending on what happens on this free throw by McDowell. Second free throws off the mark. A chance to tie or even take the lead. Green, this will be for the win! And that is how this one comes to an end.
just before noon Hawaii time. Liberty.